Are you looking for some ideas for using six by eight pattern paper without making any scraps? Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty supplies in time. So let's get making. Today I have my six by eight for A2 size card, template number 10. I'm going to be using the scrapbook.com peppermint collection. If you're watching this, the day it's released, which I believe will be June 17th, 2022. This is part of an amazing live stream deal where you can get the seven new scrapbook.com paper pads, which are six by eight, 40 sheets in each pad, double-sided, cardstock-like quality. So seven packs of those for $29.99. Crazy. And two freebies. I'll probably visit that a little bit more later, but let's focus on the template. Okay, so it says, I can start by cutting in half to three by eight inches. And this template makes A2 size cards, but it makes four of them, which is a lot and not necessarily my preference. I usually try to keep it to like two, but at the same time, when an idea strikes me, I just kind of share it and maybe it's not my best template but if I can figure out the math why not share it all right so I cut a one and a half inch piece I'm going to do that again and then I will be left with this five inch piece that I'm going to cut into strips so those are the two chunks that are on the bottom there and you need one of those per card and then you're going to need two strips per card so I'm about to cut this three inch piece into four strips they'll each be three quarters of an inch. I like to measure from the end as opposed to bringing it to the three quarter inch mark every time. Particularly with small pieces, I find it much easier to cut a small piece off of one end than to just keep cutting small pieces off. Hopefully that makes sense. But okay. Scrapbook.com pattern paper, it matches up with their cardstock. So I happen to own some of the peppermint cardstock, and that means that I can coordinate it perfectly with the peppermint pattern paper. So if you decide to get the deal, you could look into whether you're also interested in getting the pattern paper, or the solid cardstock. Okay, huh. So the issue here though is it's this dark blue on one side, and then the more green tones on the other. So my initial instinct was like, oh, do the dark blue because that'll be a great mat for the green like I think those two together like it'll really pop off that but then not so much there so now I'm thinking maybe I'll pull in one of the green colors and I think that's enough contrast on this lighter green piece and still looks great with the dark blue so that's the color I'm going to choose but I do like that scrapbook.com has kind of taken some of the guesswork out of it, that you can get these cardstock sheets to match. Of course, just match it with your collection as well. The thickness of this cardstock, it's definitely on the thinner side for cardstock, but totally good enough for layering and all of that. Not bad cardstock at all, but you know, not 110 pound quality. They don't pretend like it is though. This paper is the same thickness as the cardstock. So very high quality in terms of the thickness of the paper. These here are five inches. So I need a quarter inch bigger. We're gonna take it to five and quarter. And I probably shouldn't be cutting this whole piece, but it is what it is. And then since it's three quarters of an inch wide here, I'm gonna need this to be one inch. So I can cut my whole, uh, I can cut, I think I'll be able to get four out of this. And that'll be enough for two cards. Then I will be able to take another sheet and cut the other mats for the other, for these smaller pieces here. And I want to do this because it's the most efficient way. I could probably get everything for one card out of one of these sheets of cardstock but then I'd be making more scraps. You could take these scraps and make like fake foam tape, but again, the cardstock's a little bit on the thinner side, so it's not gonna be super thick. Maybe you take, instead of just two, take three or four if they're the same thickness. And my templates, I call them no scrap templates. They're kind of like one sheet wonders, 
However, I do realize that they do create cardstock scraps. Kind of inevitable. I have never, I don't think I've ever been able to do the math perfectly that I was able to get both no pattern paper and no cardstock scraps. Some of them are close though. I need this to be a quarter inch bigger on each side. So instead of three by one and a half, it's three and a quarter by one and three quarters. All of that is in this template. This template is downloadable at JessCrafts.com, so you don't need to worry about all the measurements that I'm spitting out, but I am trying to explain them just so if you are trying to follow along and you are more of a, and if you learn better from watching someone do it and explain every little precise thing, great. That's, these videos are for you. Okay, how do I want to arrange this? Do I want these snowflakes to be on the strips? And then maybe the other side with the branches on the big piece. I think that because these snowflakes are in these nice neat rows, them being in strips is actually a little bit awkward because this strip has almost full snowflakes. And then this strip only has two sets of partial snowflakes. So pattern papers that are really lined up like that, actually not that good for strips. I'm going to put the strips as the other side because that's a much more random pattern. And then this one, I'll let be the snowflakes because as you can see, they look a lot better there. You know, there's no weird cutting off of the snowflakes. I'm going to try the scrapbook.com deluxe adhesive roller today because if you decide to go get this pattern paper deal and get seven pads of pattern paper for $29.99, you can get this for free and another freebie. It's an ephemera pack. So, and I just figured I'll try this out because I have it and it's the freebie so you guys can see. All right, I need to be more careful because I like kind of lined it up wrong there. I'm probably just so used to my ATG. Oh, see. You gotta pay attention where the tape is. My tape is kind of slid all the way to the side there. So definitely something to keep in mind. I always find there's a new learning curve with every time you get a different adhesive roller, but scrapbook.com has had their adhesive rollers as freebies a couple of times, and that's really nice to be able to get your adhesive, or at least some adhesive for free when you're already placing an order because we go through this stuff I mean, I do anyway, like crazy. Getting those freebies kind of makes the shipping cost feel a little less painful because yeah, when you ship seven pads of paper, it's gonna be a little bit pricier for sure. It's, um, paper's heavy and shipping costs are real. Okay, I think I might just adhere this straight on. Sometimes I would take a scrap of cardstock and I'd just like bump it up a little bit. In this case, I'm not gonna do that. Just because this is a little bit on the thinner side, I don't think it particularly matters. And then I need to come up with the sentiment. I think this has a distinctly, like, there's definitely a Christmassy kind of slant to it, but I don't know that it needs to be a Christmas card. I'm gonna go with a winter card. Since this is going to be a winter card, I, I'm actually not even gonna use a winter sentiment. So really, I wanna keep it general because when I donate my cards, Organizations prefer, generally, cards they can use as much as possible. So, um, I'm going to use this Framelits with Stamp Set from Sizzix because this is another freebie. I placed my order on Monday from scrapbook.com. They had this freebie that day, and I already have it in my hands, so why not go ahead and use that? And then I wanted to show you, I actually, even though I'm only assembling one card here on screen, I do, I've already cut out all of the cardstock pieces. I have all the, I, a lot of the pattern paper pieces. I'll cut them apart as well, but I made sure I had enough. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck them into a project bag. You can get, or I don't know, like a folder. So you could totally get something cheap and easy like this from Amazon. Love it, works great. It has the hole punches so you can keep them in a binder. The lid, or the, I don't know, this, this closure works pretty well. Even though it's just like one little piece of Velcro, it stays closed. I don't really have any issue with the pieces falling out. So I'm gonna be able to put all of my pieces in there 
and this fits that eight and a half by 11. I'll put my template in so I know what, how to finish these later if I don't have time to finish them. Or you can go on Etsy and buy super fancy, beautiful project bags. This is from someone called The Camping Stitcher on Instagram. And so I'll, I'll link you to her below. And she is a fiber artist of all kinds and made these beautiful project bags, which I think she's going to have for sale in her Etsy shop soon. So, you know, you could use something like that as well. But there's um, plenty of choices out there. And it's great to just be able to, like, okay, well, now I know what I'm doing. I want to stamp this Sending Hugs. And it comes with these oval dies. And I want to make sure that I'm stamping it centered. But if I stamp first and then I try to cut out each one. It's going to be a little bit trickier to make sure I can squeeze four out of this little, this is the scrap of paper I had left after cutting out my, all my cardstock mats. I want to get all four out of them because I don't have unlimited sheets of this teal. I have pretty much unlimited sheets of white. I mean, obviously I have to buy more, but this is a scrap of white cardstock. So what I'm going to do is I've cut the circle, or sorry, the oval, out of the teal, and I've cut it out of the white. This is now my shim, or not shim, what do you call it? template? There's a word for it. I don't remember what it is. And I can add a little bit of adhesive in the back to make sure things stay in place. And this means I won't need my misty magnets to be on top of this either. I don't want it to be super, super sticky. That's why I just stuck it on my hand there. Now the sticky side is facing up and it means it will hold my oval in place as I stamp and I can put my misty magnets around it without having to put them on top because if I had to put the magnets on top it could get a little bit awkward and in the way of the stamp as you see the stamp pretty much comes all the way to the edges there I wouldn't be able to fit my misty magnets and I don't have to deal with that this is a brand new stamp so it's going to be good to condition it you can use a rubber eraser you can uh, use a piece of leather. This is a tool that has a piece of leather on it and it is from Debbie at the Stamper Secret, another Etsy shop. You don't need something this fancy, but boy is it pretty, so I like it. Then I'm gonna reincorporate some of that dark blue into my card by stamping with it. I'm not looking to add any additional colors, so I am not, I pulled um, the same dark blue from my cardstock pack and I die cut out this fancy oval from it. It's all part of the collection. There's a couple of fancy ovals that you can then center your sentiment on. And this one has all of these little circles around the edge. So I am just taking this tool from Sizzix and Spellbinders has one too. That it's just like a stiff brush that you can use to pop out all those little pieces. I'm going to then adhere those two on you could add up more layers too if you want, like each of these is just a little bit bigger so that could really let you build up some pretty layers around your If you found this video inspiring, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community, subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template tutorial, and check the video description for product links including that amazing bundle of seven papers for $29.99 through June 18th. See you in the next video!